Horo Shah, The Wanderer, by CSCH Man 20 Part 3 Kuratsuchi coded the massive log in ash and marveled at her handiwork when she saw the impressive result. The log was perfectly sealed in the ash. It had been working well all day and she was pleasantly surprised by it. She and her companions had been in Kanoha for well over a week now and she quickly found herself to be comfortable in the homey village. Sakura approached her from across the training ground and wiped her sweaty brow when she was close. Wow the pink-haired Kunoichi exclaimed. That's really something Kuratsuchi. How long have you been working on that? Kuratsuchi's pink eyes sharpened. Several months. It's funny actually, I've been working on this technique for quite some time. For a while there I thought it was because I was not using enough chakra or I was morphing it wrong but I didn't do anything different than I have been doing just now. For some reason it just works now. Sakura rubbed her chin in thought. She looked over at a heaving Mitsui who was sprawled on the grass a few meters away. They had just finished sparring and Sakura was in awe at the little girl's strength. She had a long way to go but she would probably surpass most jonin someday. That's interesting. Has anything changed in your life since you last practiced it and it didn't work? Kuratsuchi mulled over the question. Her eyes seemed to unravel the mystery as a light dawned in them. Yes, a lot has happened since then. Have you ever heard of chakra working based off emotional stability or perhaps even confidence Sakura? Sakura's eyes scrunched a tad as she mused. Her inner mind's catalog flipped through the pages of her knowledge. Considering chakra is formed and manipulated through willpower and spirit just as much through physical means entails that it is very possible your state of mind would affect its nature. I've heard of certain shinobi being unable to complete certain powerful techniques because of their mind's irrationalities. Of course there's not a lot of definitive evidence regarding the state of mind because it's difficult to observe and experiment with. But the theory is still highly probable. I take it something happened to you that affected your thinking? Kuratsuchi gazed off into the distance. She certainly had gone through enough to change her thinking. It must have been after I declined the seat of Tsuchikage. I feel a stronger burst of confidence and understanding in my heart now. Do you think those feelings manifest themselves in my ash? Sakura smiled at her friend. Sure, I think that's about right. From what you've told me it appears that your ash is reflecting your soul's condition. It sounds really fascinating honestly. Suddenly Sakura picked up some movement from the corner of her eye. The flash of yellow made a grin form from her. You know, I think I want to go look into this some more. Do you mind if I take Mitsui with me? Kuratsuchi gave her friend a confused look but discarded her slight disorientation quickly enough. Sure, I'll just stay here and practice then. Sakura swiftly jogged over to the little girl and picked her up. She ran off with the child in her arms with such a brisk run that Kuratsuchi gazed upon her retreating figure with bewilderment. When a familiar blonde poked his head out from some nearby bushes a few seconds later the Kunoichi chuckled and silently thanked Sakura's observation skills. Hi Kuratsuchi! The blonde yelled with a large grin. The Kunoichi's eyes sparkled as they drank in the image of the tall man. Hello, hero. Have you decided what you'd like for dinner yet? Naruto rubbed the back of his neck. I told you earlier this morning, anything you cook will be fine with me. Kuratsuchi once hated cooking but like many other things she had learned to like it. Kuratsuchi smiled affectionately at her boyfriend. They were currently living in Naruto's small apartment and it barely had enough room for them and Mitsui. Still they made it work and Kuratsuchi was overjoyed to have a home and a family of her own. And by that I know you mean ramen. Naruto shrugged. If that's what you want to make then sure. But it was your idea. His smile gave away his intentions like it always did and Kuratsuchi shook her head at his impossible antics. The blonde then pointed his thumb towards the cliffs. Do you mind going on a little walk with me? Kuratsuchi showed him some teeth through her flirty grin. I think I can manage to spare some time. The couple maneuvered away from the grounds and ambled along towards the towering rock formation that was Kanoha's famous landmark. They climbed the cliffs via some carved stairs and found a nice spot to settle down on top of the Yandame's head. The early spring sun was just pleasant enough to make the skin feel warm and comfortable but it was still aware of the season's firm grasp of chilled insight. Naruto felt a slight upshot of anxiety exert itself through his torso but instead of pushing it away he allowed it to skim across his heart and coagulate around his spirit. It was never good to be afraid of what the mind was trying to say after all. The world carried something now Naruto mused. This was something he could put his faith and cheer in through his life with the woman he loved by his side. 
It was something he had always known was there, but now it was real and tangible. He understood everything he had done had carried this something this purpose. His purpose was far broader than simply being the leader of the village, it was also about him being the best version of himself and wanting what was best for those he cared for. This fiery proficiency surged around his life and edified the starry path he and Kuratsuchi had cultivated together. Now they needed to make their proclamations official. Kuratsuchi placed her hand tenderly on top of his. You were able to see this view all the time growing up, hero? I'm jealous. Did you ever get sick of it? Naruto chuckled and admired the dancing leaves whisk through the broad expanse of buildings that was his home. Never. I still find it to be breathtaking. Kuratsuchi puffed out her cheeks and crossed her eyes in a silly representation of him. But not as breathtaking as you are my dear Kuratsuchi is what you'll probably say next right? A cheesy grin escaped through. Naruto shook his head as his lungs expanded in laughter. No no. Although I should have thought of that. I don't know what you expect from me though. I'm not the only one who can give compliments you know. Kuratsuchi kissed his cheek. Fine then. Those whiskers of yours are absolutely adorable. Naruto rubbed his cheek absentmindedly and chewed on the inside of his mouth. Adorable? That's the word you would use? Kuratsuchi laughed heartily and slapped Naruto's back. Now you're just being cuter. Okay, they're sexy. Is that better? Naruto nodded as he rubbed his nose happily. Yes, very much. I like to think I'm rather attractive. Kuratsuchi tapped his head with her knuckles. How much air is in that thing? Probably too much. You should work on that, hero. Naruto chuckled through his teeth to make a choked hissing wheeze. I'll give it a shot, maybe. You should probably work on that sass of yours in the meantime. Kuratsuchi showed mock outrage and grabbed his sides. Oh, how dare you! She started to tickle his sides, and they both fell down on the stone. The pure absurdity of a grown man being tickled by a grown woman was not lost on the two shinobi, but they surmised the fun they were having trumped the idiocy just enough to make it acceptable. Surely they were correct. At one point Naruto had retaliated and launched his fingers against his lover's sides and brought mutual bliss to her as well. After their sides were sore and their chests were heaving they were both sprawled out on the rock underneath them gazing intently at the chinchilla clouds above them. As Kuratsuchi was wondering if one of the clouds reminded her of a wispy piece of thread she felt a smooth hand grasp her left one. She turned her head and beamed at the wonderful man. Naruto gave her a perplexed look. Do you ever have those moments where you find them to be so perfect that you can't really admire them completely? It's almost as if the moment's perfection surpasses any attempt to capture or fully appreciate it like the moment is a living thing and we can only marvel at its existence. Kuratsuchi nodded slowly and felt her eyes grow bigger from the emotion. Her wit was still sharp at the moment. That was almost romantic hero. Yes I know what you mean. Would you say this is one of those perfect moments? Yes. It must be because there's very few things that could happen that would make it better. Kuratsuchi's curiosity was piqued. Really? You think there's something that could possibly make it better? Now you really are being a romantic because certainly you're exaggerating like one. Naruto did not falter and gave her one of those dazzling grins that always made her stomach feel warm. I think I can think of something to make it better. All of a sudden Kuratsuchi sensed something wrapped around her finger. Naruto was stroking a strange material on her hand that she had not noticed earlier. She lifted her head up slightly to see what it was and her eyes nearly bugged out of their sockets. A beautiful silver ring was around her ring finger. The exquisite piece of jewelry had been set with a single ruby that complemented Kuratsuchi's eyes. She loved it. The first thought to pass the Kunoichi's mind was why she had not felt it when he slid it on. The man was a ninja of course, but so was she. She mentally kicked herself for allowing him to get the better of her, but then the second more relevant thought skimmed her mind. Her throat dried up of moisture and then shot up to her eyes, which both darted back to view a grinning Naruto. The blonde had a power to him that she was unaccustomed to, it was one filled with anticipation and study. He was searching her reaction and she was sure he was overjoyed at her surprise. She could only listen as her favorite voice serenaded her. Kuratsuchi, I've loved you for quite some time now. These past two years have changed me and ever since I found you in that rainy bar I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. I've realized what love means because of you and I never want to forget it. I'm so thankful every single day because I know that you exist in the same world that I do. 
his own voice began to heighten towards some faraway tone he never knew he was capable of reaching. I'm so in love with you Kuratsuchi. My love is so strong that I know I need to show the world officially how great it is so will you help me do that? The greatest question Kuratsuchi ever heard was directed at her and she could never perceive a more perfect tangible moment. Will you marry me Kuratsuchi? Her answer was a kiss and they both knew what that meant. The chinchillas and the sun celebrated with them as they both allowed the moment to perform its mysterious magic. They could never truly pinpoint how the magic worked as Naruto had stated earlier. But then again neither of them really wanted to figure it out. The day of the wedding was a pristine one and there were virtually no complaints from the many people that attended it. And there were many of them. Naruto had wanted every person that had ever made an impact in his life to be invited to the celebration and he got his wish. The blonde considered everyone he had ever met to be impactful and that was evidently shown in the gigantic number of wedding guests. Almost the entire population of shinobi in all of the elemental nations were present that day in Kanoha. All of the daimyo had been worried about an attack on other locations because of the fact that almost all of the warriors were in one place at one time but then again they had been invited to the wedding too. Plus nobody wanted to face the wrath of the war hero for taking advantage of his fateful day so in the end the day was kept pristine. That morning Kuratsuchi was having difficulty on where exactly she needed to base her thoughts. There was such a great myriad of emotions she could not focus in on one of them or even really three of them. There was fear excitement dread happiness worry arousal understanding affection and love all bundled up into a messy ball of addled insight. She had woken up early to ready herself for hours of preparation that were to be executed for the entirety of that long morning. Her bridesmaids were just as fussy as she had imagined they would be. She was seated on a stool in a makeshift and temporary building that Yamato had made for them. A massive vanity was in front of her and her five maids were nodding gawking smirking and groaning all at the same time. They were arrayed in identical satin red dresses. They were discussing every possible arrangement Kuratsuchi's hair could be fixed into and none of them had been satisfied with any of them so far. Her hair was currently displayed about on her shoulders in a messy form of ebony mesh. Fumiko put her finger on her lips and trailed her other hand through her daughter's strands. A ponytail would look kind of tacky right? I mean who uses a ponytail for a wedding? Kuratsuchi had decided on her mother to be the matron of honor. Considering she had virtually no female friends in Awa because of her training and distaste of them for most of her life, she decided she needed to pick at least one lady from Awa. And it was her mother and she would not wish for any alternative. She was surely important enough to be given such a worthy title. It was unconventional but the dark-haired beauty never really liked traditional views on these kinds of matters. The other bridesmaids were all of Naruto's friends and recently hers too. She was happy to say in the last several months she had become familiar enough with all of them to easily grant them such crucial titles. Sakura nodded as she heard Kuratsuchi's mother question the hairstyle. You're right. It wouldn't work well at all. She has such lovely hair and it needs to be fully appreciated. The pink-haired woman turned to Ino. Do you think a flower in her hair would look good? Ino set her chin in the palm of her hand in a dainty manner. Yeah, it could. It would probably need to be red or yellow because that would match well with her eyes and hair. Orange would actually be better because it would go well with Naruto's suit. Should we straighten her hair then? Hinata raised her gentle voice. No, I think that would be too plain. I know we decided for her makeup to be simple but we don't want to make her hair too basic as well. I think we can still make it simple but a bit more intricate at the same time. May allowed her slender fingers to stroke the curtain of jet black silk. I agree with that. I think if we try to use some gemstones then maybe that could give off a nice flair. Eno scoffed in surprise at her fellow bridesmaid ignoring the woman's obvious status. Are you serious? That would look positively gaudy and it would totally clash with her personality. It's one of the first assets people will notice and there will be a lot of royalty at this wedding so we need to make sure that everything looks as best as possible. May snickered and brought up both hands in defense. The red-headed beauty was unused to being addressed in such a manner but she actually did not mind at all that much. It was nice to be treated like everyone else for once. Plus the Mizukage found Ino's audaciousness to be refreshing enough to satiate her appetite for entertainment. Sorry, I was just putting it out there my dear. We need to exhaust all of our options after all. Fumiko nodded decisively. May Sama is right. There's nothing wrong with thinking about even the most ludicrous ideas because we never know what the final result will be. Ino sighed and agreed. 
Sakura tilted her head and stared at her friend's reflection. We haven't really asked what you would like to do Kuratsuchi Sakura observed. Is there something you had in mind? The bride blinked and she shook her head as she was brought back to reality. Her mind had been all over the place and she had not been paying attention to her bridesmaid's banter at all. Oh what? Sorry you mean my hair? Couldn't we just curl it? All five standing ladies blinked in silence. They individually exchanged glances with one another and felt the embarrassment of such an obvious solution cover them. Hinata was the first to comment, that sounds good to me. Fumiko giggled softly. Yes that would be quite nice. Ina rubbed her temples and steeled her resolve. All right. Let's curl it then. We still need to get her in the dress so we don't have a ton of time. May was already searching around for the necessary tools and was grinning happily at the fun prospect of treating the bride's gorgeous locks. Kuratsuchi swallowed and fastened on the image that was her reflection. She was going to be married soon and all of the ramifications were skirting along in the thickness of her mind. Her wedding day was surely going to be a memorable one. There was something remarkable about the village of Kanoha that many members of its society took for granted. It was adaptable. During the days of their original Hokage old feuds and traditions were still ingrained deeply into the civilians and shinobi alike. As time passed the people began to care and view others as more important than their simple and outdated ideology. Even in today's time the people of Kanoha were still grasping some dogmatic principles that were as ancient as they were foolish. There had been so much improvement as the years went by that the only event that could make them forget themselves was major destruction and a scapegoat to concentrate the hate towards. Unfortunately due to Obito and by extension Black Zetsu, the interference of the Kyubi doomed the growing potential of the village. The people had discarded the very existence of the boy they had deemed a monster and openly shunned him from their community. Despite this the boy ended up doing the last thing anyone ever thought he would do. He loved them. He rose above the suffering and brought people together. The amazing quality the blonde possessed was he made a person feel like even if there was no prophecy or some grand war he would still have done what he did. He never needed all of that extra potential to make him act the way he always did instead the young man loved the very people who had once glowered in his direction. In a world based around complete fairness the boy would have probably sought revenge on those who made him suffer and never forgive their cruel actions. He would have cut off ties with Sakura for leading him through strife and killed Sasuke for his betrayal. But Naruto never really believed in being fair because he knew justice and mercy went hand in hand. He forgave not for pragmatic reasons but because he loved those people and knew forgiveness was what was best for them. If seeking revenge was ever best for a person then all people who ever wronged another would have died long ago. And truly mankind would have gone extinct by such a revelation. It was for all these reasons Kanoha adapted to the person who was Naruto Uzumaki and cherished his nature and leadership. A testament to their love was the grandeur and brilliance of his wedding. The young man had initially been worried about expenses but before he knew it charitable funds from everyone including shopkeepers to feudal lords were sent his way to cover the cost. He had been given so much money he had to deny certain gifts after only two weeks of unsolicited fundraising. He had more than enough to plan the wedding of his and Kuratsuchi's dreams. Naruto had given the funds and the numerous responsibilities of his wedding plans to Kakashi and Shizun. The Hokage had plenty of matters on his plate already but considering the sheer numbers and prestige of the wedding guests he understood the significant disadvantage he would be placing on himself if he did nothing at all about the ceremony. He handled the more delicate matters concerning certain important figures and grander details while Shizun basically handled everything else. Naruto had approached her formally to thank her for her help and bowed deeply then to properly express his gratitude. The sweet older woman was extremely fidgety and flushed over his action and told him repeatedly she was simply doing her duty. The traffic through the village was immense that day as thousands of people gathered about to reach the designated location of the wedding. By some genius insight someone had proposed on using one of Kanoha's largest training grounds as the wedding venue. So most of the people gathered in the village then made their way over to the southern outskirts where an enormous glade was set in the trees. The glade was even required to be made larger and was promptly dealt with courtesy of Yamato himself. The wood release user had also formed the temporary buildings for the ceremony's preparations and other structures necessary for the wedding. The late summer weather was a perfect umbrella for the outdoor venue and elevated the warm cheer of the day. As the crowds that had accumulated from weeks of congregating filtered into the expansive glade the two men standing on the edge of the field were gazing out upon the throng of people. I mean if it's this big for his wedding can you imagine the size of his inauguration? Yamato mused with disbelief. 
Kakashi shrugged lazily and leaned against a tree trunk. He was garbed in his ceremonial red-trimmed kage robes and he still managed to look casual in them. Yeah, I think I can. I'm starting to slightly regret my decision of aiding him. Yamato folded his arms and glared at his friend incredulously. Shouldn't you be out there showing face and meeting with royalty and all? Kakashi sighed and stared up past the rim of his long hat at the thick, scattered clouds above him. Probably, but I think I can manage to steal a few more minutes without it all getting too out of hand. Yamato scoffed and his shoulders drooped with disappointment. He suddenly noticed a table nearby missing a chair adjacent to the open tent and quickly formed the necessary hand seals to create a wooden one in the empty spot. He placed his hands on his hips and exhaled slowly when his work was finished. Well I hope you realize you have a terrible work ethic. I'm the one here busting my ass all day and you're complaining about simply meeting people. Honestly, you're impossible. Kakashi pinched the bridge of his nose. You're worse than Shizen you know that? I'm an introvert by nature and would much rather appreciate the beautiful day. Although I should probably be grateful for your help. His eyes flicked over to his friend. Thanks. Before Yamado could further complain the Rokadame Hokage left his comfy tree trunk and ventured out into the welcoming crowd. Before the Hokage could wrap his head around his current stance he was pulled into a group of people who clapped him on the back and regarded him warmly. From a distance away Yamato shook his head with amusement and moved to check his handiwork. In a nearby building Naruto and his groomsmen were getting ready for the wedding. They were all arranged in identical orange tuxedos that were trimmed in white. They were all wearing suit jackets except for Naruto who was garbed in a matching vest. The blonde was standing in front of a mirror and his best man Sasuke was staring at him with an entertained smirk. Naruto fastened his tie for the tenth time and nodded it in frustration. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate ties? Seriously, these things are the worst. From across the room Shikamaru called out with a dull inflection. I couldn't agree with you more. He was straightening his own tie at a smaller mirror, his eyes straining in irritation. Suddenly Rock Lee slapped his palm upon the Nara's shoulder with such extreme force that Shikamaru winced. Come now Shikamaru. Today is the very epitome of youthfulness. Our cherished friend and future Hokage is getting married. Long exaggerated tears began to stream down the Taijutsu master's face. It's just so emotional. Are you not happy for our friends on this joyous day? Shikamaru simply rolled his eyes and worked on his tie in silence. Killer B looked at the odd spectacle next to him and rapped to the groom. Yo, Naruto! How much more time until the wedding is prime? Naruto had his tongue between his teeth as he finally had his tie placed where he needed it to be. Pretty soon Octo pops. We got another hour I believe. We should be going out and greeting the guests soon. Shikamaru called out again to the blonde. You know, Kiba's still pretty upset you didn't make him one of the groomsmen. And don't even get me started on Shino. Naruto pursed his lips and raised his guilt-ridden voice. I know. I told them I was sorry. I could only pick five guys and it felt like picking favorites. It took me like a month to make this decision. Instead of furthering Naruto's guilt Shikamaru simply smirked with amusement. From the other side of the groom Gara stepped forward with a stoic expression. How are you feeling about the ceremony Naruto? The blonde groom turned to his friend and blinked. After he processed the question he grinned happily. It's probably the best day of my life. Although the day of my inauguration will definitely be a close second. Sasuke picked up on where Gara was going. Are you nervous though? Naruto shook his head, confidently. Nope. As a matter of fact I'm bursting with excitement. The cheer in his blue eyes erased all doubt in the room. Shikamaru having finally straightened his tie joined the other men by Naruto. I'm not surprised. So we heading out there then? Naruto's eyes sharpened and with a quick motion he turned towards the door that led out into the glade. Yep. Let's go gentlemen. Naruto opened the door and the six men exited the makeshift building and strolled out upon the grassy field. Over the last couple of weeks the blonde had been greeting and conversing with many of the wedding guests as they had arrived into Kanoha. Even though he knew every single person by name and face when he approached the massive crowd of people he still felt an overwhelming wave of affection and emotion when he came into view. The crowd clapped and cheered when they saw the war hero and the blonde was in a dazed state of mind because of their love for him. A young man with light green eyes emerged from the great crowd and sprinted towards the groom with a cheerful smile. 
Naruto recognized him as he drew closer. Kusi I glad you could make it the blonde said before the young jonin embraced him with friendly sincerity. Kusi I chuckled and released his friend. His body was larger and his muscles more pronounced. He had grown. Glad to be here my friend. I just got in this morning. Gara waved to Kusiai from behind the tall figure of Naruto and the young man waved back. I'm also glad you managed to find a woman who can match your unique personality. Naruto chuckled as well and rubbed the back of his neck. Yeah, more like I found a woman who can put up with my personality. His smile then became more soft and grateful. Thanks though. I'm happy to be with her. At that moment some more familiar faces neared the groom and made their presence known. There was Suji from Aim the Counselors from Kusa the Frost Daimyo Akatsuchi the Rakage Motoi Mabuicho Juro and many others. Naruto had once questioned if he could ever grow bored of seeing so many happy faces he had become accustomed to over the years. He had found the apparent answer rather quickly. After Naruto had managed to give everyone their due pleasantries he and his groomsmen neared the wedding altar. Anoki was already standing there behind his small podium garbed in his ceremonial robes. When Naruto and Kuratsuchi had asked the Sandame Suchikage to officiate their wedding the old man had agreed without a second thought about it. The proud grin currently etched into his wrinkled face was also a testament to his feelings on the matter. Naruto shook his hand and the old village leader acknowledged him with genuine interest. This will be a fine day my boy. I've never seen a greater turnout nor a brighter afternoon than this one. It's as if the very heavens are blessing the covenant you are making today. Naruto beamed at his soon-to-be grandfather-in-law. Well that sounds nice. Although I'm sure it would be a great day even if wasn't that bright. The old man nodded at the bold statement. I couldn't agree more. After some more minutes and civilities were thrown about the ceremony finally started. The colossal field was arranged into two sections. One section was for the actual wedding ceremony and the other was for the reception. The section for the ceremony was composed of two humongous columns split by one long walkway marked as the wedding aisle. The two columns of chairs were lined along by rows for a considerable distance in order to compensate for the imposing number of guests. Along the path of the walkway a tasteful orange carpet had been rolled out. Long ropes of red flowers aligned the inward row of chairs next to the aisle. When everyone had been seated that day there was scarcely an empty chair left in the vicinity. Naruto standing tall in his orange vest stood on the stage and watched the long line of the wedding party approach him from down the line. Because the ceremony was outside and the field was level the blonde could barely make out the white frame of his bride at the end of the broad section. But he willed himself to stare at the front of the line so as not to break the inevitable moment. The second he saw his bride he wanted it to be filled with wonder and detail. He got his wish. Finally the wedding music began. The wedding party started with the flower girl Mitsui who painted the orange carpet with a colorful arrangement of flower petals. The little girl was arrayed in a white dress covered in flowers of various design and color. A delicate crown of flowers was placed upon her head and a happy smile placed on her lips as she roamed down the walkway. Behind her Sasuke and Fumiko the best man and matron of honor marched down the aisle. The entire wedding party were all dressed in identical suits and dresses but Sasuke and Fumiko had matching roses pinned to their clothes to signify their status for the wedding. Next down the line was Shikamaru and Sakura followed by Gara and Mei. Rock Lee and Ino were behind them and the last couple was Killer B and Hinata. When all of the wedding party were finally on the stage Naruto's breath hitched as he saw the approaching two figures stop at the opposite end of the aisle one in white and the other in red. The entire congregation were all looking at the bride. As Kuratsuchi began her advancement towards the stage she turned to her father whose arm was linked with hers. His grin was broad and the bride could feel her heart swell with emotion. Kuratsuchi faced forward towards the stage and her eyes were now only focused on the orange figure at the front. Even from afar she could make out the blurry sparkle of his cerulean eyes. Her breath became shaky in her chest and she could feel tension shoot to her hands that grasped the orange and red bouquet. Naruto allowed the natural energy of the day to sweep past him. Anoki had been right about how bright the afternoon was but the aura of his bride shined past the sunlight with ease. Her very face hardly concealed by her veil glowed with illumination and beauty. There was a still moment of reflection for the blonde as he was taken in by the mere admiration of his soon-to-be wife. The bride mused on the splendor of her future husband. His innate confidence flooded the field and melted away her anxiety with profound brilliance like a wax candle before a hot flame. She was engrossed by the white of his teeth that became increasingly brighter with every step she took. 
The groom smelled the sweet air that filtered through his nostrils and flowed out of his fresh lungs. The tenderness of his future wife's frame was permanently ingrained into his mind like a hand-drawn picture that was carefully sketched upon an earthy scroll. He was fixated on the gentle rhythm of her pace that naturally moved with the melodic flow of the music. She thought about how masculine he appeared to be with his perfect posture. His hands were together at the front of his waist and his huge smile was unwavering. His very power could shake the foundations of the earth but he almost always chose to be kind and carefree rather than violent. She could see the affection illustrated in his eyes and she sensed a copious amount of acceptance there. He thought about how feminine she was with the dancer like impression she imposed upon him. Her hair was curled loosely into ebony tresses that hung along her shoulders. A lovely orange Gerbera daisy was placed over her ear and Naruto could not help but beam at seeing it. Her thin veil could not contain the intensity of her fine porcelain features. Even beyond such gentleness he was aware of the strength she exuded almost carelessly. Her lithe figure told of powerful abilities and graceful water like fervor. Kuratsuchi drew closer. Her heart raced and her face flushed with the rope of flowers surrounding her. Naruto's intelligent persona reached out to her and briskly flared her soul. She could sense the ferocious passion of his love and there was a faint sheen of perspiration on her skin as his body came into clear view. Naruto awaited with patience. He knew her charm transcended any worldly pleasure and he would battle against any foe to have that very charisma directed towards him. He would give her all of himself and was prepared to accept her purity as the most precious gift he would receive. Her smooth love was sharp and flexible in its essence and he cherished it with the proper amount of concentration. She reflected on the details of his rare soul and the intricacies of his superb character. She then felt the presence of her father kiss her cheek and leave her to walk up the wooden stairs alone. He ruminated on the fabrication of her demeanor and her flawless attitude towards the unknown. He gazed upon her final steps and drank in the fullness of everything she was. Her steps quickened as she yearned to be next to him. His mind readied for her lovely presence. She was so beautiful. He was so handsome. She loved him. He loved her. They met there on the stage. Their hands intertwined and held their hearts there. The couple faced Anoki and the elderly man began. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. During the oration Kuratsuchi turned at an extremely minute angle and whispered carefully over her breath. I just had to let you choose orange, didn't I? Naruto tried not to look away from the tsuchikage and somehow managed to match her level of volume. I could say the same thing about your choice of red. Her whisper grew slightly louder. You're just lucky it turned out okay. His eyes gleamed. I'm lucky to have you. Kuratsuchi felt heat rush to her eyes and was about to reciprocate his kindly gesture when Anoki's exasperated gaze peered over the edge of his book at her. She clamped her mouth but a small smile escaped. Naruto had a similar expression on his face. Anoki slightly shook his head at their antics but never faltered in his speech. When the time came to exchange their written vows Kuratsuchi was the first to speak. She pulled a small scroll from the inside of her bouquet and she kept a gentle smile as she read, Naruto I have come to understand many things about the world these past couple of years. I thought I knew of things that were far larger than I could ever conceive. I was so lost in my thinking and never bothered to think about the more basic or more important matters that life has. After I met you I began to question my views and recognize where I was in this bizarre world. I realized I never loved myself and I needed to accomplish that before I could truly love you. Once I finally accepted and loved who I was I diverted my passion and intentions to you. She could hear some sniffling in the crowd but she continued without any of it distracting her. You've always been kind and loving to me and I wish to always humbly welcome your feelings. I promise to give all of myself and never give you anything else. I will remain by your side and never leave it because of how much I cherish your very existence. Thank you for choosing me. I love you Naruto. Naruto's exuberance almost blinded her then. There was an unspeakable joy in his expression and she was touched by who he was. Even if the days where she grew sick of his idiosyncrasies came or the ones where she was altogether frustrated with him approached she would never stop loving him because her love was founded in something beyond emotion and circumstantial happiness. Anoki then beckoned Naruto to read his vows. The blonde fished a scrap of paper from his vest pocket and he grinned as he read, Kuratsuchi, I'm truly a fortunate man. Not only will I be fulfilling my dream of becoming Hokage soon but I have also been blessed by the presence of your hand. Luckily, I've been writing a lot these past few years so my words will hopefully be good enough to impress everyone here today. A general laugh emitted from the crowd then. 
Naruto paused and then continued after the laughter had subsided. Even if my writing was inadequate, however, I would still wish to express my most intimate feelings to you. I have been changed by your power and grace and I hope to continue to grow with you. I cannot imagine a future without you because to do so would be to imagine a future without or find me. You have given me the best of yourself and from this day forth I promise to give you my very best. I cannot promise I will not ever hurt you or will always love you unconditionally because I am a flawed human. There was more sniffling in the crowd this time around particularly among the female guests. But I can promise I will seek the knowledge of the world in order to know what is best for you and attempt to give whatever that may be. I also promise to remain loyal to you and help carry both of us through our marriage. You will always be mine and I will always will be yours. With every fiber of my soul and being I give myself to you. I love you Kuratsuchi. Teardrops flowed down Kuratsuchi's cheeks and she wanted to throw away tradition and passionately kiss the blonde right then and their royalty be damned. But for the respect of the congregation she was able to hold herself together. It was at that moment Anoki slammed his book and with a great and jubilant outcry he exclaimed, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Naruto flipped over her veil and locked his lips with hers in the symbolic gesture of commitment and true love. Yelping and cheering roared from the crowd as the immense congregation celebrated the esteemed couple. Anoki's voice still managed to rise over the cheering as he introduced their status. Ladies and gentlemen I present to you Naruto and Kuratsuchi husband and wife. With that cue the bride and groom ran down the long aisle as more flower petals rained upon them. Music floated around them as the couple found themselves wrapped in a flurry of petals and charming affection. They swam through the cheers and were ever grateful for the many people that affected their lives. They were now one person joined together before the world and they would never forget it. They counted their blessings and were elated by their findings. The shaking trees sang with the throng of guests and the world turned with them. They were now married. As the day waned the reception began and flowed into the twilight. A great open tent was erected in the other section of the field with a plethora of tables and chairs strewn about from inside and outside the canopy. The reception proved to be as pleasant as the ceremony itself. Sasuke's speech was short and sweet and left many of the females in the audience weeping. Fumiko's speech was equally emotional and Naruto could not help but tear up a little at her sincere words. The dancing ensued after that and a wonderful orchestra accommodated the dancers of the night. Kuratsuchi and Naruto showcased their dancing skills and everyone was left in awe at their grand prowess. At one point during the dancing Rock Lee had grown too familiar with the drinking bar and slumped across the dance floor with drunken grace. He easily upstaged the treasured married couple and they had trouble containing their laughter from his absurdity. When the wedding cake was cut by the married couple Naruto had quickly launched a piece of cake into his wife's face without warning. He had been waiting his whole life to do that and Kuratsuchi was more than happy to give him her own piece. His throat tasted like frosting for many days after that. Eventually, the night darkened and the married couple's departure was imminent. The frost daimyo had granted them a week at the finest hot spring resort of his country for their honeymoon free of charge much to their ineffective protest. Kakashi had previously told Naruto of how the means of transportation would be handled by an interesting individual. Naruto found out who that was when a familiar old man approached the couple with a wooden wagon. The elderly man they had once saved on a bridge on their way to Takigakure flashed a toothy grin at the married couple. Naruto had laughed heartily then. Fumiko and Kitsuchi managed to give their regards to their daughter and son-in-law. Kitsuchi guffawed cheerily from his belly. Have fun you too! If your lives together are half as prosperous as this wedding was then you too will be just fine. Naruto embraced his father-in-law. Thanks to Chan. He did not even bother to ask for permission concerning Kitsuchi's new name. They were both fine with it. I'll be sure to take great care of her. I promise you that. Fumiko nodded as she stepped in with a devilish grin. Of course you will. Be sure to enjoy your honeymoon. Don't overdo yourself in the bedroom. Kuratsuchi's face was heating up from irritation and Naruto's from embarrassment. Make sure you two rest enough. I expect a lot of grandchildren from the two of you so be sure to. Kuratsuchi interrupted her mother with a hug. Thanks mother. We'll take care of it. Fumiko wrapped her arms around her daughter and could feel her eyes tear up. Yes good. Well then. She broke then and cried into her daughter's shoulder. I'll miss you sweetie. I know mother said Kuratsuchi. I'll miss you too. With that Fumiko backed away from her daughter before she became even more of a hot mess. 
Mitsui then ran up to them before they departed and hugged her surrogate parents. I'll miss you too. Come back soon okay? I want to move into that nice house Yamato made for us soon. Naruto grinned brightly and ruffled Mitsui's chestnut hair. Kuratsuchi kissed her cheek and promised they would not be gone long. Kuratsuchi jumped into the back of the wagon and cheerfully threw the bouquet into the crowd. A certain swift pink-haired Kunoichi caught the flowers and immediately eyed the handsome man standing next to her. Sasuke smiled lovingly as he kissed the woman of his dreams. The congregation shouted their happy farewells as the wagon trudged past the field and away from the village. The couple held each other close in the back of the wagon and listened to the gleeful whistling of the old man as the stars shared their brilliance with them. When they reached the main road Kuratsuchi looked up from the chest of the man that was now her husband. I don't ever want to forget this moment Naruto. Please don't ever let me forget it. Naruto kissed her brow. I don't think I could ever let myself forget it so I'm sure I can do the same for you. Kuratsuchi was certain. She was certain she loved this man and would never stop loving him. Love was her choice to make every single day and she would always choose him. She would always choose to seek what was best for him. Knowing he would reciprocate those feelings was the greatest revelation of them all. Isn't it funny how the world works Naruto? It pushes and pulls all at once and somehow it manages to fit the best of moments in the time where you most need them. Naruto nodded as he admired the star's gift. I know. I feel like I'm always thinking about what I'm thankful for. When I do that I can't help but feel good and positive. It's like a breath of fresh air every time I dwell on the wonderful parts of life. I think that's what it's all about you know? We need to increase the wonderful parts as much as we can and think on them. It's all right to acknowledge the bad stuff I suppose but I never want to stop counting the good things. Kuratsuchi had opened his collar and fingered the orange coral necklace Mitsui had gifted him. I like that. I'll keep counting then. Her pink eyes shone brighter than any star that night and Naruto could not stop his admiration. I'll always count you hero. Kuratsuchi sank into his lips and dressed herself in their mutual love. She thought on their future in that pristine moment. She imagined her and him with Mitsui in the comfy house Yamato had built for them where they lived in the harmony of their little family. Kuratsuchi would become pregnant and birth their first child. They would allow their family to expand and bask in the wonder of their connection. They would advance beyond strife and remember to forgive when necessary. Naruto would become the greatest Hokage ever and bring the world far into the future of peace. She would always be by his side until death eventually tore them apart. But even after that their constant desire for what was best for the other would transcend even death. They would continue on past history and into the great power that ascended all beings called love. The world celebrated with the married couple as the wagon took them away. They wandered into the night and into their dreams. The trees danced for them and the shadows of the earth bowed before their mighty love. They had gone far and would continue to move forward along the way of their lives. They never stopped wandering. The trees never stopped dancing and the world never stopped existing. The warmth never stopped surging. The light would never stop reflecting. The certainty never stopped developing. The search for meaning never stopped advancing. Their love never stopped. Naruto and Kuratsuchi were one. And they just kept counting. Epilogue She awoke to the songs of twittering birds outside the bedroom window, their shrill melodies seeming to give life to the morning slants of light bouncing against the glass panes, and she felt stuck for a second as if she was unable to move away from the fixed picture of wood sun and sound. Mist leaked delicately over the eaves of the roof above her window, but it was a thin screen and the sun seemed to push it away with ease. The sight overtook her and locked her away for an indistinguishable moment so she could swim in the waves of the melodies. It was only when the sounds registered openly that time seemed to tick back into focus she finally noticed his side of the bed was empty. She swerved her head toward their bathroom and saw the door was open with no one inside. She had a small mental battle with herself and decided to shower before she went off looking for him. The gentle morning in combination with the warm water against her tired skin made her forget about him for a little while until she came out into the world again. After getting dressed and ready, she debated whether putting on makeup would be in good taste and eventually opted on avoiding it. Kuratsuchi passed down the hallway floating among the streaks of muted fog that had slipped into the house in the night and peeked into Satoshi's room to see he was still asleep lost in the latter parts of his dreams where few could later recall. She had a strong notion to go over to him and run her hands through his ruffled bed head but she decided to watch his still form for a moment instead. Ayane was already awake and Kuratsuchi found her in the kitchen. 
Lately, she had been getting up earlier than almost everybody else and was currently trying to prepare some rice. Kuratsuchi reached over her and placed her hands upon hers. Now I hope you plan to make some for everyone she said sweetly. Ayane flashed a smile and giggled. Sure. I'll try not to burn it like dad did. Kuratsuchi crouched down and kissed her daughter's forehead. Did you see him leave this morning? She nodded. He went to work and had a really serious face. Nine years old was a perceptive age and Ayane was a particularly observant little girl who tended to stare at matters and things she found to be interesting as if she were unsure of their origins or even amazed by the fact they could be made of something else, something more complex or intricate beyond what she was just experiencing. Kuratsuchi wasn't sure if she was that bold herself to actively question so brazenly like that, but she was overjoyed to see it through the slender eyes of her daughter. I see Kuratsuchi said. She helped prepare breakfast with Ayane until Satoshi awoke to join them. Kuratsuchi picked up her son kissed him and set the table. They ate happily with Ayane's excitable comments popping up every minute or so along with Satoshi's encouraging nods. They both played off each other rather well and it was a topic of conversation whenever they were among Kuratsuchi's friends to which she would normally respond in humble agreement but she had done nothing to instigate it, it had been their natural relationship as soon as Satoshi had been old enough to interact with his sister. She loved them for that. After breakfast the two of them darted into the backyard to play and Kuratsuchi followed. As she stepped out she realized it had been foggier than she had realized, scattered openings in the clouds allowed the autumn sun to peek in presenting the illusion of clarity but breaking in a better picture. The sky danced in light grays and purples with yellow striking across it and she watched the clouds move slowly with the fog dissipating away in a fleeting ghostly manner. There was nothing foreboding about the weather unless a person brought such personal feelings to it but the enormous deep clouds still carried a density to them a weight that Kuratsuchi admired and respected in the same way a climber may acknowledge their arduous ascent afterwards. She sat on the porch for some time overlooking the grassy yard with patches of sun widening across it until she felt the presence of someone in the house. She was delighted when she saw it was her husband. Naruto opened the sliding door and smiled down at her. Happy birthday he greeted. Her own smile was wide and full of love. Thank you my love. I was hoping you'd take a short day but I didn't think it'd only be half the morning. He bent down and kissed her firm and sincere. I wanted to wake you earlier but I had to get that paperwork done so I could have the whole weekend for you. Her eyes fluttered curiously still half dazed by the kiss. The weekend? As if he enjoyed the idea of making her wonder he turned to the children and jumped into the grass with them. She blinked and watched him flounder and pick up the both of them practically launching them with his massive hands while their cheerful giggles floated sweetly in the air. Kuratsuchi watched the scene as if she were experiencing all the splendor of a still moment captured in a frame a touch of enlightened knowledge dipping its emotional understanding into her mind and allowing her just to observe and feel all that she was capable of. I want to take you into the mountains, Naruto announced as he brought the children over each of them seated on his shoulders. Satoshi gently patted his father's head. Are we coming too, dad? Naruto grinned. I have something better for the two of you. I've asked Mitsui to come stay while your mother and I'm away. Ayane pulled on her father's shoulder with glee and the two children both squealed with excitement. Kuratsuchi was delighted to hear them but her attention was on her husband his own startling eyes matching her gaze. How is she? I haven't seen her in a while. Naruto crouched and released the children. She's great. She just got back from a mission last night. He approached her and laid his hands on her shoulders. Now you should go pack. I want to leave tonight. Kuratsuchi saw the passion in his gaze of friction that hadn't necessarily been absent, or even too infrequent, in their marriage, but there was an intensity there this time that seemed to rise within her and she felt surprised at how unbalanced her mind immediately became. This was healthy she thought as healthy as any couple could be. Okay, she breathed her voice, pushing out all of the heat within her. A splendid grin crossed Naruto's features and he moved to the children with a jovial roar and they screamed happily while she left them. Kuratsuchi spent the latter half of the morning preparing everything they would need even taking care to manage Naruto's things. He was perfectly capable of doing that himself of course, but she wanted to do something for him wanted to continue to support his every move. There had been a streak of independence in her still during their first few years of marriage, it had been devised of obdurate views to not cater to his whims or desires by instead not clipping away her own. That had been an argumentative spot for them but it was only when he showed such humility in his position that she realized it wasn't about her at all or just him and that doing something for them for not just her wish to push against a man's domineering pride was the means for a successful marriage. And she conceded to love him despite her nature to fight. 
That being said she still felt like she was a rather capricious person and he seemed to love that about her so she kept that intact. She always did like that about herself. Right before Mitsui arrived Kuratsuchi took the time to put on her makeup and dress appropriately for the evening. Naruto had mentioned dinner once they trekked into the mountains and she wanted to make him feel as she did now. She wanted them both to be unable to look away from one another. When Mitsui entered the house Kuratsuchi realized just how much she had changed. Her hair was a little longer and her eyes a little deeper their icicle qualities shearing away any doubts within a person but what really seemed to have developed since she last saw Mitsui was her demeanor. She had matured. Her words were gentler more delicate as if she were holding a fragile gem in between her teeth and she had such a graceful step now as she glided towards the children to embrace Mitsui looked up at her Kuratsuchi felt a mixed rush of motherly love and pride flood within her. Happy birthday Kuratsuchi Mitsui greeted you look amazing. There was a time when Kuratsuchi first heard her adopted daughter drop the casual nickname for her given one and she had felt almost betrayed by it. She missed it when her child had been little and ignorant and called her an older sister but now she was an equal a standing woman with power and love and freedom and it would be wrong for Kuratsuchi to wish for anything else. There was still that closeness even without the old names perhaps they were stronger for that. Thank you Kuratsuchi replied with solidity. We appreciate you coming to help while we're away. Mitsui's smile was dazzling creating a magnitude of light in the front room. I'm more than happy to. Honestly, I'm thrilled to hear you two are going off alone together. Naruto seems like he's been so overworked lately and I bet you both will enjoy some rest. Kuratsuchi was about to respond when Naruto joined them from upstairs. Mitsui. He cried as he flew down the steps and hugged her. Oh stop it Naruto she giggled. You just saw me. Her smile gave her away though. Kuratsuchi was reminded of their journeys together in that second of watching them hold each other and felt much older all of a sudden as if she were simply admiring a passing photograph with an entire untold story before her and if someone were to ask about it she was certain she wouldn't be able to recall any details such was the potency of the moment. Naruto released her. Every time I see you I can't help but be proud you know. Mitsui tried to look embarrassed but her pale eyes were shining. You're so silly. Kuratsuchi noticed another emotion in her features one most certainly composed of another form of pride but far younger and more elastic. Are you two all packed already? We are he answered as he nodded to his wife. I'll go get the bags and bring them down. After he went up the children moved into the living room and the two women followed. I know you'll be gone only two days Mitsui started but you should both be out as late as you can be. It's really no trouble for me. Naruto gave me the whole week off and I love spending time with the kids anyhow. Kuratsuchi was only half listening to Mitsui's words, she was too mesmerized with the woman to really focus on what she said. It was a wonder to see how much a person could transform how they could miraculously invest themselves and reap tremendous rewards from the future they prepared for and Mitsui had cradled all she had been given like it was meant to all be returned one day and she wanted each part of it to look better than it had when she had received it. She inspired Kuratsuchi and reminded her of her past self the self that doubted her darker parts rather than accepting them because in her own way Mitsui had accepted them as well. After Naruto came down with the bags Kuratsuchi kissed her children's faces sensing the familiar bitterness of having to leave them if only temporarily. She moved to hug Mitsui and the younger woman pecked her cheek lovingly. Have fun Mitsui said. I love you. In the same sense Kuratsuchi had once felt the world was not as depraved as she thought it was she considered then its brighter parts in a far clearer fashion. There was a time where she had wanted to escape to really pull away the stitches of what she thought was merely an illusion but it was pure untouched moments like these where she remembered why she had acted otherwise. Life was capable of all possibilities, it simply had to operate like that and she couldn't be more thankful than she was for the opportunities she had been given the choices she had made. It was best to reflect on those matters the most. I love you too she said as she began to cry. They had reached the crest of the hill before the sun had fallen too low so the amber clouds had drifted along its outer rays, creating golden disks in the sky as the slowly darkening edges drifted in. Kuratsuchi looked back at the sunset before they entered more foliage on the way to the cabin and Naruto turned to look back at her. Sure you didn't eat too much? He jeered. You're looking a little slow there. She flashed a mock frown. Oh really now? I'm still quick enough to plant my foot up your ass. He laughed in that remarkable clear way he always did. I'm sure you are. They looked up and saw the remnants of the rain earlier that morning droplets pulled into vanilla rose cups where the fresh wind swung their bulbs carelessly as if they were white lights daring to be seen by some secret trestles of the wood. There were no distinct sounds in the forest, at least none that she could highlight with her limited understanding there was instead a kind of external aura pulsing throughout the trunks and underbrush. 
Scattered, insignificant movement from small creatures bouncing through the patches of green and light could be seen all around. Life was here and it was moving along its simple path like it always did. They were just there to see it. At one point right before they reached the cabin with hands intertwined Naruto turned to her with a smile. You're beautiful. She was struck by the suddenness of the comment but that seemed to make it more potent. Thank you she said. If I wasn't already in love with you then I think I could fall in love again right now right here. That's very sweet of you to say but I'm glad you loved me all this time. It's much more rich that way. You have made me the richest man in the world my love he declared as the cabin came into view. You're also one of the most powerful but don't let that go to your head. Naruto chuckled and squeezed her hand. I'll do my best. The cabin was modest but sturdy. Its rustic logs were aged finely like the caramel drippings of a worn barrel. The grass around it hadn't been weeded in some time but it was not as overgrown as the wild foliage encircling it was. Kuratsuchi noted the preserved roof and the care put into the varnish on the front porch. The cabin had existed before the both of them had been born having been used by many higher executives of the daimyo's regime over the years. It wasn't used as much these days having been unofficially replaced by a far more modern and rather gaudy villa residing higher in the mountains. Despite that this little abode had been a favorite of Kakashi's and he still used it as a retreat during most summers. Naruto certainly didn't need to ask permission to use it from his old master but he respectfully always did and Kakashi obviously never denied him. I'm getting hungry Naruto announced. Want me to start cooking? It might take a while. Sure said Kuratsuchi as they approached the deck stepped up some creaky stairs and opened the strong cedar front door. As Naruto swiftly moved into the kitchen to prepare their dinner Kuratsuchi took a moment to admire the cabin. They had stayed there before several times but Kuratsuchi always acknowledged it felt both different and relatively the same every time they were there like visiting an old friend who grew as much as you but still maintained their relative friendly character. The fur chairs in the main living space were the same and the hardwood floor never changed but the atmosphere the very air was always different as if the wind moved it all around whenever they left and welcomed them to learn and experience more when they returned. Kuratsuchi stepped into the master bedroom and began to unpack as Naruto rummaged in the pantry. Thanks to Kakashi always making sure the kitchen was well stocked before anyone came Naruto was cutting potatoes next to a boiling pot of water already by the time Kuratsuchi was finished putting everything away. She looked over the counter with a smirk. No ramen noodles? I thought for sure Kakashi would have put them here. Oh he did my love said Naruto with a grin as he chopped a potato into neat chunks. But I'll be saving those for dinner tomorrow. You can't have a nice retreat without some curry after all. Plus it's way easier. She nodded and grabbed another pot from the top shelf over the oven. I agree. Want me to start the rice? Yes, please. The next hour passed and they ate heartily once the meal was finished. Night came shortly after and they retired into the bedroom for kisses and a smooth passionate dance in the sheets where time didn't really seem to move at all. Their bodies carried one another to the familiar places of love and knowledge of brighter clear scenes. Kuratsuchi loved those moments no matter what form they tended to take. She saw a rigidness in them like they were developing into the solid forms they always were meant to be like mountains pushing through the upper crust of colliding tectonic plates daring to fight for their nature for their existence. And after they were done and exhausted they fell asleep in each other's arms. Do you ever think about it all my love? Kuratsuchi asked the next day after lunch while they relaxed on the front porch. They had slept in and decided to have a simple meal with rice miso soup and some steamed vegetables. Naruto looked up from a scroll he was reading and gave her a puzzled look. What do you mean? I mean, do you ever look at everything we've done together and well think about it all? You know, big picture stuff. Of course he said, all the time. Sometimes I think I've forgotten who I used to be a completely different woman who was so scared. Naruto's eyelids lowered. Yes that was a long time ago. Sometimes I forget too. I mean, I used to hate myself Naruto. Like regard everything including myself as meaningless. Naruto leaned back into his chair and gazed across their view of the forest. A calm breeze rustled the budding verdant gowns the trees had dressed themselves in that season and the heat of the sun didn't reach the couple on their shaded deck. You know after thinking about it all this time I'm not sure things being meaningless is as bad as we thought. Kuratsuchi was surprised to hear that but let him continue. He nodded as he noticed her reaction. I know how it sounds, but I think we all go through something like that at one point or another, a kind of guessing game where we figure out where we are and where we want to be. It's not easy and most people I think just kind of push it aside and don't dwell on it. 
He smiled then. But you didn't do that. You kept going no matter how painful it got. Kuratsuchi frowned slightly and considered his words. So you thought all that was normal? Not exactly, he admitted. The process itself was but not its execution. You were so hurt and so deep in your misery that no one could pull you out. But you did, she said softly. No, you did that yourself. I helped, I guess, but you're the one who loved yourself again. Small tears emerged in her eyes. I had to because then I couldn't love you. He sat up and kissed her. And I'm very glad you did. But it was more than all that though she said as she wiped her eyes after he sat back down. It was more than just loving myself. I had to acknowledge myself from where I started and from where I ended. I only took up so much space as a person and didn't know where the edges of myself were. I'm not even sure if I ever will but at least I had an idea. Naruto scratched his chin and paused for a second. Where would you say you are now? What fills that space exactly? Kuratsuchi thought about that and said, I guess that I'm for one thing, a mother. And I'm also a woman. A wife. A lover. A shinobi. She seemed to stop and reflect on that a little longer. But more than that I think I'm more confident more aware that I am who I've always wanted to be. Naruto smiled. That's great my love. Kuratsuchi felt a sincere push one of those clear true thoughts not bridled with doubt. But also that I love you that I see and know your heart. Naruto beamed and kissed her again. I love you too. I think we've both done it. I think we both achieved everything we wanted. Yeah, we reached all our goals. I don't know if we could really create any bigger ones if we tried. She smirked. Unless you wanted to start a whole other family elsewhere. Naruto laughed. Oh, I considered that, but it's way too much work. It took me years to figure out this one. Kuratsuchi jumped into his lap and kissed his cheek. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. She kissed her forehead and stared intently into his eyes. I'm never letting you go young man. He flashed his dazzling grin the one she had known and cherished for so long now. Right back at ya. In that moment as the afternoon waned and the land they laid in world in that magnificent way where time wasn't measured they would enjoy their moments together. Kuratsuchi knew they were going to have ramen that night and then return home to their little family the next day. She knew she would hold her children and give them loving kisses and would continue to promise all the things a parent should. She would love her husband for as long as they lived and they would face some arguments and some moments of peace. She knew they'd bicker and make sarcastic jokes seeping with love and care and that dry humor she loved so much even when it wasn't his exact type of humor but he had grown to like and respond to it. And the kids would grow up healthy and capable becoming leaders of their own lives probably becoming skilled shinobi yet knowing their parents were always so proud no matter who they became. And they would love and know and learn and grow into the future knowing what was real and meaningful. They could never stop doing that. They would never stop being. The End